push anyone to cross my path. The blood that flows through her veins is special and extremely dangerous. If showing pity would put my allies in danger, I will not hesitate to kill her. You have disappointed me, Edelgard. So this scene is way different than before. And, ah, uh, uh, like, why am I siding with Edelgard? Like, I know I need to to get to that side of the story, but what is my what is my motivation here? To think that a descendant of House Heresbelk would dare betray the Holy Church. So, it is my teacher who stands in my way. I always knew it would come to this. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. Now here's where Rhea screws up. She shouldn't leave it up to me. So, okay. And exactly, if I kill Edelgard, I go into Church Rapt. Yes. Although I'm assuming I don't actually kill her. You. How dare you. My teacher... I... thank you. But are you certain that... No. Now isn't the time for discussion. Words cannot properly express my gratitude, Professor. So, this is the choice you have made. You are just another failure. Now another is an interesting word here. I wonder how many times she's tried this experiment. Your presence soils this holy tomb and disgraces my brethren. I will not allow one who would lend our enemy strength to wield the power of the goddess Sothis. I have passed judgment, and now I shall rip your chest open and take back your heart myself! <laughs> That must be the Immaculate One. So yeah, this this would be so freaking confusing if I hadn't already played the other routes. Yes. The monsters that have controlled Fodlin in secret for far too long. Rhea is their leader. There is no time to waste. Your Majesty, Professor, we must escape while we can. And we're just supposed to like... I mean, <laughs> what? Okay, so again, this slot one is the Black Eagle slot. Part one. White clouds. Lone moon. Outset of a power struggle. Together, the people of Fodlin relish the beauty of the brilliant moon overhead as another year ends. They recall sad partings and new acquaintances alike, but each person must still walk their chosen path alone. With each day, the presence of spring grows stronger, and yet a lone moon still haunts the sky, a silent reminder, perhaps, of some inescapable truth. That seems to have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on. <laughs> I guess they oftentimes don't, but... We somehow managed to escape. And again, like, all the students just kind of, like, went along with it? This is one of the Imperial Army's provisional camps. Here we can organize our forces. I'm assuming that they teleported me? Before we go any further, I want all of you to really ask yourselves if you're certain you wish to join us. As expected, Flane has chosen to leave our ranks. Yep, yeah, that's... we knew that was coming. When I saw our professor running off, I ran about as fast as I could to catch up. Kaspar, death finds those who run without thinking. You gave no thought to the Warfog. My grandfather was the leader of Bridget, and I hope for us to be allies with the Empire. I will be staying. Okay, that makes sense. Well, was this a good idea? Did I make the right choice? Bernadetta, you ran away from your room. I don't I don't know what's going on in your head. Oh, but my family is 
is part of the Empire, and our professor is here. You're fine here with us, Bernie. Though it's true certain houses were against the Imperial Princess. I assume you're referring to my family. I must believe that the conclusion I came to was the correct one. You are the Emperor now. I am the only one left who is qualified to guide <laughs> you at this point. I'm only here because I know it would be troublesome to stand against you. I mean, that's very true. I'm not just here for you, Aidy. I'm here to follow our dear professor. Of course, I don't have any territory to offer, so Hubie may not even want me here. The greater our numbers, the better. Your reasons for being here are of no consequence. <laughs> I think I understand where you're coming from. But now, I wish to hear of your resolve. All right. Like you, I have risen to meet my destiny. I cut this path, and I will see it through to the end. Following me is akin to pointing a sword at the goddess herself. One misstep, and we fall to our ruin. Well, it's not messed up. You have now witnessed the Archbishop's true self. She is a cruel beast. Those who rule this world use that beast's power to fabricate miracles. All to control those who blindly believe in the goddess. That's an interesting way of looking at it. They conceal the truth and force their lies on the nobility. They mercilessly annihilate anyone who defies them. So that's why the Eastern Church was so against them, because the Empire's East. I know this because I have lived it. After what you have seen, is there any room for doubt? The Church of Seros has great influence and power. Their control over the Lords of the Kingdom and the Alliance is nearly absolute. We are the only ones who can stop this indomitable enemy that has plagued our world for ages. We fight for humanity. For all of Bodlin. I do have to say they sell her pretty well. I still I still find going to like destroying the church to be a bit of an extreme because I I don't see the fact that she's actually a dragon as the fact she's fabricating miracles. Like magic does exist. I'm like, dude, what, what does the term miracle even mean in a magic rich society? If you dare walk this path with me, take your first step. It's now or never. Thank you, my friends. We what was that? Did everyone just drop the... the Empire, and we will triumph. That was incredible, Lady Edelgard. Thank you. Honestly, I'm relieved. They really chose to follow me. Yeah, well, this playthrough. I was resolved to move forward alone if I had to. But in my heart, I hoped it wouldn't come to that. So long as I am here, you will never be alone. Please do not forget that. And it would seem that the Professor also has a key role to play in this. Yep, something like that. You're right. Now, I must speak with our dear teacher. Please, make preparations. The messenger should be here shortly. Consider it done. Man, think how bad this May I speak with actually you? is for the church, because, like, I had, like, 95% of all the students following me. Like, they've got three, they've got three, or they've got four students left. I appreciate it. I... I'm just anxious. It feels like the weight of this burden is crushing me. I mean, you should have had plenty of time to get ready for it. At this very moment, on my orders, I'm starting a war. An army far larger than the one that attacked the Holy Tomb last month will soon be locked in battle. Why didn't you talk to me beforehand? Like, I, I wiped out your whole army single-handedly. Okay, not single-handedly, but without a, like, significant threat. Long-devised strategies are unfolding across Fodlin. Leaders are deciding their loyalties and preparing to fight. So many generals and soldiers will die. It's inevitable that civilians will get caught up in the chaos as well. There will be countless casualties. With a single command, the flames of war will rage across all corners of this realm. And I am the one who is giving the order. Yet you... This is the path you chose. Yes, it is. There is no turning back. No matter how much blood flows at my feet, I will not relent. We must break the bonds that the depraved church has placed on Fodlin. 
These sacrifices will allow us to create a future where we never need sacrifice again. It may seem contradictory, but it's the only way. <laughs> Listen to me. I made up my mind long ago, yet here I am, seeking your approval. Tell me the truth, my teacher. Are you happy with your decision to stay by my side? Oh, that's a tough question. Unlike me, you can still walk away from all of this. I mean, not really. This path leads to the death of the Archbishop and the servants of the church. Can you live with that? Okay, it's not actually making me choose, which is good, because I'd have a hard time. I never thought... I'm sorry, it was a foolish question. I believe in you, Professor. And you believed in me. With that knowledge, I have the strength to keep fighting. Let's go. There's something I need to say to Hubert. I still wonder what his role in all this is. Your Majesty, the latest report indicates that our main army is advancing as planned. Also, the preparations for your manifesto are almost complete. Ooh, I like manifestos. We will be distributing our manifesto to every lord within Fodlan. We will expose the dark side of the Church of Saros and the foul practices of the nobles from the Kingdom and the Alliance. I mean, I'm sure the Empire has some foul practices too. We will force the people of Fodlan to open their eyes to the truth and relinquish any remaining conviction to unite against the Empire. Certain nobles have already offered us their support. Surprising. Yes, there are other nobles who oppose the Church. We will condemn those who deserve condemnation and forgive those who deserve forgiveness. We have already purged some of the Imperial nobles who are more... Okay, I was gonna say, because the empires are terrible. My father among them. <laughs> How unfortunate. And soon we will invade and conquer Garrick Mach. Our main army has already departed the Imperial capital. They will arrive at the monastery in two weeks' time. All right. There, we will join forces with them. As for us, I'd like your opinion on how we should be positioned within the army. Yeah, we we cannot fight defensively. Your Majesty intends to fight alongside the Professor, correct? In that case, you will not be incorporated into the Empire's main army. Your squad can move freely about the battlefield under supervision of the Imperial forces. That would be most prudent. Now that I'm the Emperor, we can't let it slip that I'm following your command in battle, Professor. Well, that's interesting. She's like totally like, no, please tell me what to do. I fully object to the notion of you fighting on the front lines. Hubert, we've already discussed this. My apologies. I overstepped. Now that the details are settled, all that's left is to come up with a name for ourselves. In honor of our time at the Academy, how about we call ourselves the Black Eagle Strike Force? Nassif? With you as our leader, I'm confident we will. To me, that name represents us soaring toward a new dawn as freely as an eagle. <laughs> Fly like an eagle. I'll leave it to you to prepare the Black Eagle Strike Force for departure. Okay, that's this is I, I'm finally to the part that I'm super interested in because this should be relatively a completely new experience. I mean, I, it, I'm sure we we'll use some of the same maps, but all the missions should be fairly unique. I almost wish I'd done the church route before this one because, like, save the best for last, but. The church route is kind of my culmination of the game and like all my favorite units. Like it, it, it deserves to be the capstone. Okay. I came this far mostly on impulse, but I wonder if it was the right choice. Yeah, that's going to war with the church is a bit of a. Everything will be okay, right, Professor? I'm not wrong, am I? If I know that you think it's okay, I feel like it will be easier to believe in myself. Okay, but we also... You you know how it goes. We've got tons of these to do now, because it finally unlocked rank A's, I'm pretty sure. You know what? 
we will do those. I kind of want to talk to everyone first. Professor. Um, Professor, I'm okay with fighting whoever we need to, but I really don't want to battle my father. I mean, I'll try not to have oh, you do but that. I know that something is wrong with the church. And more than that, I believe in you, and I trust your word. You lead, and I'll follow. Imagine making half the world your enemy for the sake of realizing your own ideals. Edelgard is so radiant and strong compared to someone like me. Because these are all brand new conversations. I kind of want to get everyone's like thoughts on the matter, and then I'll go into all the rank A's. What if I have the power to change the world too? Even just a little bit. Oh, come on. I don't even get my own room here. At least I had that at home. I'm sorry, Bernie. But speaking of home, Hubert told me something. He said my father was stripped of his title. I guess he did as he pleased and opposed Edelgard. Wait. Does that mean my father's going to be home all the time now? <laughs> second thought? I'm fine right here. All right, Ferdy. I asked Edelgard what happened to my father. He was dismissed as prime minister and is under that was him. I thought the so. Imperial capital. He always was a greedy, arrogant man. Some would say that this is the fate he deserves, and yet I cannot help but feel indignant. After all his hard work for the empire, to be disgraced like this. <laughs> I am conflicted, Professor. I do not know what to do. As the next Duke Iyer, should I follow Edelgard into battle? Yes, you're definitely coming. <laughs> Black Eagle Strike Force, eh? I like it. It's really a twist of fate that brought me to this side of things. But I'm still proud to be here. So here's the Ashen Wolves just kind of hang hanging around the food pile. What's the deal, pal? You don't want me here? Come on, have a heart. Yeah. Offside is where sure. all the action is. Okay, I had to make sure the recording was still going on. Look, I'll level with you. I mean it. I have some bad news for you regarding how much help you'll be able to be. If Her Majesty gets what she's after, my mother will forget it. Now's not the time. We've got to keep our heads in the game so we can win, yeah? Having Yuri on our side will help things. He's not someone you want to have as an enemy. Oh, of course, Constance starts talking to Edelgard. With the Empire taking over Garrick Mach, I wonder what will happen to Abyss. Some people have spent their whole lives there. For their sake, I hope Abyss doesn't get trampled into... Happy is all about opposing the church. She's super, she's super excited to be here. Try talking about it with Eddie. I mean, Her Majesty. She might listen to you. Also, this is less important. But if somebody trashes my room, I'm gonna be mad. I, I knew nothing of Lady Edelgard's past or of her innermost feelings. Oh yeah, the sun's not out. But I know now. I persuaded her to tell all. It would have been rude to hound her relentlessly until she revealed herself. Yes. Sure. Then that's certainly not what I did. <laughs> we will join forces with the main army and attack Garrick Mock. I'm actually excited. Like th th this is, I, I I'm more keen to press on than I have been in a long time. Like it, uh, I've been kind of treading water up until now. It's a fortress built on steep ground. But it's never seen battle. That means we don't know much about it from a military perspective. But if we use all of the power at our disposal, we will capture it. From a purely mathematical standpoint, we most certainly have the power to win. If the battle becomes a clash of beasts within human strength, you will be our only hope. I believe in you. I, mean, I don't know, you didn't need me the other I'm times. I'm relying on you to lead the Black Eagle Strike Force to victory. It is not up to Her Majesty to bring the students to our cause. That task falls to you. Well, I already did it. Those who have forsaken their homelands to join the Empire will be feeling vulnerable. 
You are uniquely able to provide emotional support. Please use that gift to guide others down the path that Lady Edelgard has laid before us. I ask you to do this from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's almost sentimental. Surprised that I'm here, are you? I know a winning side when I see it. I mean, there's no way I'd risk my neck and my people by willfully joining a losing battle. You'd better hope I did. Otherwise, we're both dead. <laughs> Regardless of who comes after us, even if it's the knights, we've got you on our side, so it'll all be fine. It is interesting how basically all of these are like, yeah, you, you're here. That means we're winning. The most important nobles in the Empire are known for taking power from the previous Emperor, my father included. I didn't think it possible that the Imperial Princess could ascend the throne so easily. However, it seems that both my father and Kaspar's are supporting Edelgard. Having both the Minister of Domestic Affairs and Minister of Military Affairs on your side gives you total control over the Empire's military and finances. You must have been making preparations for quite some time without yeah, ever done noticing. Bloody good job. <sighs> that could have gotten dangerous fast. If I stayed at the monastery, I would have had to fight my father. We aren't especially close, but he's not an opponent I'd want to face. I'd almost rather fight a monster. Well, hey, guess what? Anyway, it looks like he's going to be leading the Western units. I wonder if we'll wind up fighting the Kingdom's army. And who decided to fight for the church? It's gotten so real. That's awesome. I mean, you know I have to feed the cat. Uh, yes, hey you. He just straight up does not have a weapon. Holy crap! Come back anytime. What happened awesome. to you, Kathbar? I must have sold his and then just completely forgotten Will about it. Will this one it. do? Many thanks. Will this one do? Many thanks. Come back soon. I may return to Galatea territory and try to convince my father to join our cause. Hey, good luck with that. It's possible that... <sighs> no. In my heart, I know that my father won't listen. Still, I must get him to see reason. That this is the only way to ensure our family's future. Times are fine. Welcome. Please come again. Hello. Surely this is what the goddess willed, isn't it? I feel she would not have wanted the Church of Saros to become what it has. I'm actually really surprised that Mercedes came along. <laughs> I've done it now. Gone and done it now, huh? What would my old man say if he knew I'd sided with the Empire? His Highness must be angry. Dimitri gets super scary when he's like that. I wonder how I'm going to die. Ugh, my knees turn to jelly just thinking about it. No, I, I can't think that way. I promise to fight alongside you. I'm here until the end. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm terrified, but I feel so calm. Yes. To be frank, I'm not sure whether I should believe all that Edelgard says. Oh, you should never believe all that Edelgard says. But if her words are true, I think it's best to be her ally. So I'll fight. I'm not at ease with that decision just yet, but I'll stick by it. All right. Let's see you guys over here. Yes. Edelgard became emperor and raised an army, huh? Who knew the kid had it in her? I mean... Yeah, of course, I knew she'd be Emperor eventually, but the more I think about it, the more surprised I am. I wonder who's gonna win. Thinking about it makes me scared. We're fighting the Knights of Saros. Still, I know you'll figure something out. Have you? I mean, like, the Knights of Saros, I, I don't know why everyone acts like they're so scary. They're like level 15. <laughs> like, we've much surpassed them by now. The Empire and Bridget were once warring with each other. But now, I have made the decision to be fighting with the Empire. It is a choice of irony, I feel. But I am having no regrets. My belief is with you, and with Edelgard. Okay, can't talk to him. 
already talked to Bernie. I have not talked to Felix yet. Yes. I've been preparing to take this path. My own path. Not my old man's, and not the boar's. It's interesting how everyone's kind of off in their own little corner. Like, they, they don't really want to... You've turned against the church to ally with the Empire too, huh? You didn't know that when you came? I've never pressed him for details, but Captain Gerald was always suspicious of Lady Rhea. This does make sense why she'd be like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into this. I'm on your side no matter what. I promised him I'd support you, and that's what I plan to do. If the church is behind the current state of things, this society in which only crests are valued, then I have no need of it. Edelgard is taking the shortest path to change. No matter how drastic her measures, I agree that this is the only way. That said, if Edelgard strays from her noble path, I trust you will set her straight again. Won't you? Absolutely. I am counting on you, Professor. They do they're handling this very well, actually. No need to worry about me. I got no complaints as long as my little sister's safe. Sure, I lived on Alliance land, but that doesn't mean I serve their lords. I'm sure this is the right path, seeing as you're the one who picked it, Professor. I just realized freaking Manuela and Tenerman are here too, aren't they? To this. Even a few months ago, I never could have imagined it. I believe in you, Professor, so I'm stealing myself. I can't promise that I'll be useful in battle, but I'm not running away from the fight. Ah, yes. Hi, people I don't know. I'm Randolph von Burglis. I'm not very high in the ranks yet, but I'm more or less a general. What does more or less mean? Just like Caspar, I'm from House Burglis. My mother married into House Burglis after I was born, so my position within the family is rather lowly. But I'm determined to make something of myself in this battle to bring glory to my part of the family, for the sake of my mother and sister. I, I, I literally didn't ask about any of this. I believe that this is the first time we have met. My name is Ladislava. I have the great honor of leading Lady Edelgard's personal guard. Oh, I thought that was my job. Her Majesty is as hard on others as she is on herself. She may seem composed, but that is only because she conceals her more passionate emotions. For that reason, she is often misunderstood. But now she has you by her side. I find that most reassuring. I look forward to working with you. Yes. I have heard the name Lord Vestra mentioned among the Purge noble families of the Empire. He's Hubert's father, but Hubert seems rather unconcerned about it. Well, yeah. That alone is why we soldiers find Hubert quite frightening. <laughs> Everyone finds him a little intimidating. I can't bring myself to trust the Church of Saros. Not after they killed Lenato and my brother. That very much makes sense. I need to know the truth. Even if it means turning my weapon on Fargus. I guess Lenato would be happy to hear me say that. If he were still around. Ah, yes. Okay. Hmm. I've decided to ally myself with Lady Edelgard. Father will doubtless understand. My I mean, reason. obviously, he does the same thing in most of the other paths. House Gloucester has always had good intentions in its dealings with the Empire. Of course, this does mean I will no longer be able to avoid a confrontation with Claude. It is unfortunate. We were classmates, after all. Okay, I've gotten most right. everyone. I'm a soldier. But I, had to I wonder where, like, the, uh, again, Manuela and Shamir and, um, Hanuman are. Since birth, I believed in the teachings of Saros without ever questioning them. But Her Majesty's words are true. To think that the Archbishop can take on such a monstrous form. Well, wherever they are, they're not here. All right, we're almost we're almost out of time. We can go ahead and start our supports. As always, I will be saving my supports for the end. Actually, no, I won't. No, I won't. No, I won't. I think you kind of get overwhelmed if you try and do too many of them at once. Interesting, you can't do that one yet. 
I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh. Sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. I mean, you can, although this is a weird time to have this conversation. Which normally I wouldn't, like, remark on, but it, it literally waited until now to have it. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy. But Hubert would never allow it. Who cares what Hubert says? Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? I see. I'm finally getting an idea of what you think of me. Okay, wrong answer. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit sentimental. However, I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. Well, yeah, losing yourself sucks. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. Until now, no one has been able to surpass me, much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. I mean, you've only been an emperor for like a day. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, I will always be grateful. Hey, my pleasure. Wait, that was really it? I say I was saving mine to the end, but yeah, wow, all of these still can't actually go. Surprising. All right. Wow, what? These are like so unevenly unlocking. Edelgard, do you have a minute? You want to speak with me? How unusual. Please, come in. I'll prepare some tea for us. Have a seat. Would you care for some cake? Always. Yes, please. I never say no to sweets. You certainly don't. They're from Enbar. A bit too sweet for my own liking. Isn't that the whole point of cake? Well, more for me. Mm, these are fantastic with this tea. <laughs> True. Well, there's no shortage of them. Help yourself to as many as you like. Now then, you wish to speak with me? Mm, mm. So, I, uh, can tell you know a fair bit about me. Mm, mm. Oh my god, I can't believe they actually recorded this scene. <laughs> Maybe this can wait until you've finished eating? Mm. Edelgard. You know a fair bit about me, don't you? What in particular? For example, the fact that I have two crests. Oh, that's hard to believe. Oh, don't play dumb. No need to play coy with me. It won't work. It's clear my body has succumbed to the intense pressure of bearing two crests. Due to the immense requirements of bearing these crests, my life expectancy is painfully short. Actually, this is the first I'm hearing of it. How would I know unless you told me? Still won't drop the act, huh? Despite how obvious you've been with your concern about my health, you're certainly consistent. I mean, that's a word for it. I'm not really in the mood for these games. Given your rank, you certainly have access to all kinds of information that others do not. Clearly, you'd have heard all about me. Either way, I know now since you just told me. I, I, it's interesting that being this coy about it. About your two crests, your physical weakness, and your short life expectancy. However, according to the principles of crest research, it's impossible to bear two crests. Well, principles are dumb. Unless you've undergone a blood reconstruction surgery. Is that the case, Lysithia? Correct. 
wasn't as though I had a say in any of this. I see. So you've lived through that relentless terror and agony, and survived. You speak of all of this as though you understand it on a personal level. Edelgard, have you... I mean, isn't it obvious? You're a good friend, Lysithia, and a valuable member of this army. So I won't have you overexerting yourself. I don't want to lose you. Understand? I understand. <laughs> good girl. Oh, and if you like those cakes, why not take some with you for later? There's no need to pander to me. But, yes, I'll take those. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And, yeah, we have time for one more, and we'll go ahead and hit Lysithia, too. There you are, Lysithia. I've been looking for you. So, I have a hypothesis about your crisis. This is kind of funny since she just admitted to someone else. I know you're the one who sent me that anonymous letter. There are things we must discuss. Ugh, it sounded like some bizarre love letter. What? No, of course not. However, I wonder what you would have done if it was. Now I'm just confused and grossed out. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is not the overall topic of discussion. Do pay attention. Pay attention to you? As though anything you say is worth listening to. It's not like you can tell me anything I don't already know. You don't have a very positive opinion of your crests, do you? That's why you should listen to me. Um... Yeah, that, that stopped her immediately. I've dug through all my books, and there's no record of anyone being born with two crests. You are, to be blunt, an impossible occurrence. For you to have a second crest, it must have been forcibly implanted after birth. Yeah, this is, this is not new information for her. Is that your theory, then? Yes, it is. To further the theory, if the power exists to implant a crest, then it must be possible to remove one, too. And that is the real issue at hand. I... I could have one removed? That's what Hanneman is working on understanding. I'm helping him with it. That's actually a good point that I never considered. Professor Hanneman? Based on your reaction, it seems you want one of your crests removed. Which one? I don't think I'd give up having two crests if I were you. Is that so? Even if you'd gone through horrifying experiments, endless trauma, and if you knew that all this pain meant you die very, very young? That's what you think? You're completely lacking in empathy, so of course you would make such a crass... Why, you didn't even let him answer! Holy crap! She still didn't let him answer! And Constance only has Ferdinand. Who should we have? Tell curiosity. You've heard of all people. Interesting and unexpected. Sure, why the hell not? What is it, Hubert? Nothing in particular. I was just recalling your impressive skill with the bow. I'm willing to bet you could put an arrow through the neck of an enemy general from quite a distance. In fact, to any leader's bodyguard, I would go so far as to say you pose the most dangerous kind of threat. It's interesting to have this conversation after Shamir already joined us. Although I don't know where the hell she is. Don't worry your fragile little self. Your lady princess is safe. I wouldn't shoot my employer. I would certainly hope not. But there are some mercenaries to whom a contract means little. And you would do well to remember that Lady Edelgard is no mere princess. You should take care to learn the proper form of address for your employer. I said lady. <laughs> I already told you. I'm not going to break the princess's contract. What did I just say? Dude, Shamir is not afraid of you, Hubert. Actually, no one is. Proper address. Right. Next time. My patience has limits, you know. For the moment, you may stand in Lady Edelgard's good graces. But if you become a problem... I will not hesitate to eliminate you. You've tried this line on me too. You're unstable, Hubert. Be careful who you threaten. I don't take kindly to those who get in the way of my contracts. Is that a threat? Just some advice. So, I see why they waited until now to let this interaction happen. I 
All right. And with that, we will come back next time and hit the rest of these. And then might even get to the next battle. Like, I don't know. I thought there were a lot more of these than there are. But actually, you know what? We're going to go over. We're going to go over, guys. Um, Hubert? Yes? I just, um, I wanted to thank you for the other day. You know, when I fainted. Thank you for carrying me back to my room. That was nothing. It saved me effort in the long run. Leaving you there would have just caused even more trouble. I guess that's true. Well, thanks. There, I said it, and now I'm going. <laughs> Is this why you've been circling me like a vulture for the last several hours? Uh, vultures a bit... well, yes. Yet you would have fled if I'd approached. Yeah, absolutely. It seems you will avoid me at almost any cost. What is up with the cuffs on these people? Um, well, that's... You don't need to say it. I know. I'm frightening. I'm told so often. <laughs> Please don't laugh like that! <laughs> Apologies. I will be mindful not to laugh in your presence from now on. <laughs> the grin of death itself! T terrifying! He's not that scary! You think so? I've killed him lots of times. Oh no, now you're angry too! Hardly. I'm sorry to have frightened you. No, you're not! It's a trick! You're lulling me into a false sense of security! Ah, I can't stand it! <laughs> She's a lost cause. Somewhat, yeah. I really liked Bernadetta until I spent more time with her. She is a little bit one note. Oh, hey, hearing. Hello, Constance. Greetings, Ferdinand. My condolences on your misfortune that our paths have crossed. Oh, my God, again. stop. Oh, dear. I am not used to hearing you deprecate yourself like that. Never mind. Just listen. If it is an audience you require, I will endeavor to meet that need. When we last spoke, I was attempting to connect with you, to listen and show you some empathy. I was so clumsy with my words that I came across as callous and conceited. I hurt you. I know. The notion that a noble of House Iyer could display arrogance is difficult to credit. Oh my god. No. A no, no, a thousand times no. That you even deign to speak to me is a testament to your humility. As grateful as I am for the honor, it would be best for us both if I take my leave. No, please, hear me out. Though your words chafed, I see now that they were perceptive. I was being arrogant. I tend to... overcompensate. Perhaps I make a fool of myself, bragging about my superiority to Edelgard. Perhaps. It's, it, it could... It, that could be the case. You do yourself a disservice. If you are a fool, then I am Folly herself. But you must know that... It is no reflection on your sterling quality, Ferdinand. Even in the face of such adversity, you never strayed from the correct path. If this was the right path, the wrong path hardly bears thinking about. <laughs> Still, your kindness has eased my worries a bit. A wise noble once said that life is a series of peaks and valleys, but I have struggled to find the peaks. But you know all about those valleys. I was once pushed to the nadir of a valley, and have spent my days confined there ever since. There is little chance that I will ever return to the heights I once knew, but it will not be for lack of trying. Your persistence is admirable. You are too gracious. I see the highest of peaks on your own road. The way is steep, but not long. You will reach it yet. And if my words might reach the ears of a man who has attained such heights, perhaps one who has reached his summit might pull a climber up behind him? Such is my heart's desire, unspeakable though it may so, be. I, you kind of just spoke it very easily. <laughs> All right. Almost there. Looks like two more. 
Flint Heart and Bernie. <laughs> A little more crimson, maybe? May I suggest vermilion instead? I mean, that's the kind of esoteric distinction. Vermilion! Yeah! I know! I see it! You don't have to say it! I've got no talent at all! Why is everyone a painter? I said nothing about your talent. I simply suggested vermilion over crimson. Do you know vermilion? It's just a softer shade of crimson. I believe it would... Oh, forget it. This is your artistic vision, and I am but a meddler. I am going to read my book and leave you to your art. <laughs> It's fine. Say what you want to say. It's good advice. I'll use Vermilion. Thank you. Well, I'd best be heading back. Phew! Finally done! I think... Congratulations! All finished? Uh, please, don't look at it! Everything looks a bit faded, doesn't it? Ironically, Crimson may have been a better choice after all. The sense of distance on the petals is a little strange. Perhaps you should pay closer attention to such details as you paint. Oh my gosh, I hate being crispy. It's like, I'm just, I'm just learning, fuck off. A preliminary sketch would do wonders. Still, it... Oh, forget my pedantic comments. You really do have potential. <sighs> Bernadetta? Oh, idiot! Hopeless! Waste of charm! Just burn the whole thing! That's why you need to be careful with comments like that. Huh. Perhaps I should have kept my thoughts to myself. Hi, right. Petra and Dorothea. Dorothea, I want to be asking you a question. Oh, please do. Why have you come to Garrick Mock? Is your gold different from the rest? Yes, I suppose. Everyone here is an heir or an heiress, but not me. I'm just a commoner. You're a great commoner, though. When I enrolled in the Officer's Academy, I was different than everyone else. I wanted to secure my future, and my big idea was to marry money. Yeah, well, no one else ever, ever had that idea. Ever since, I've been dating different, terribly well-to-do men, searching for a good one. So far, there's been no reason for a second date. Marrying money? That is not sounding like a good idea. <laughs> Money would be a bad husband. Pretty much. But you treat me well. I have so much gratitude. But why do you show me such friendliness when I am not money? Oh, no, Petra. This isn't like that. I like spending time with friends. It's wonderful being friends with you. And I hope we can stay close for a long time to come. Yes. I have that hope, too. I also have that hope. But I have also been thinking of who is good for me. Oh. I see. And still I am thinking we should be friends. Oh, I know why. Because we're both trouble for Imperial nobility. <laughs> Petra's not trouble. Petra is adorable and wonderful. Yes. We both have troubles. Feels nice, doesn't it? Knowing that together we can irritate that many people. Since we've already got a lot in common, let's get to know each other better, shall we? I don't feel like they were talking about the same thing. Okay, and with that, we are Dunskies. So, I will go ahead right. and push out to battle in the next one. Thank you very much for tuning in, and look forward to it. I definitely am.